Okay, so you're looking at right here a broken spigot. So this is our hose bib here, it's all broken. And today we're gonna to show you how to replace this with a brand new one. Hey everybody, Jeff here and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Hey, we have lots of videos here to show you how to do plenty of repairs. So today we're going to replace this spigot here. And so the first thing you wanna keep in mind here is right here, this is your main water cutoff. Pretty convenient that it's right here. But we wanna turn this off here to the house here and we've already done that so make sure it's nice and tight if it's over to the left like this you want to make sure you you go ahead and tighten it all the way like that and then once you've done that you want to go ahead and release some of that pressure because you don't want to just all of a sudden pull this off when there's a lot of water pressure in there so open up this gate valve here and now all the water's pretty much out Okay, so now that the water pressure is off, there's different tools you can use. You can use a monkey wrench. I usually like to use my channel locks here to stabilize the, the pipe like that. And you can also use, uh, I like to use my rigid plumbing wrench. This is really nice because it's two wrenches in one. They kind of uh, unscrew separate from each other. I'll put links to all of these down in the description for you. But what I like about these, these are geared just for doing your common valves valve changes. So see how this one here will fit right over that nut right there? And then this smaller one is used when you're doing valves like under your, your vanity, when you're doing your toilet valve as well. This will fit right around those little 3 8 inch hex nuts that, that, uh, that tighten up on the hose. So this is a great tool for that. And you can also use a monkey wrench here to go over that part of the spigot there. Okay, so when you go to um, loosen these here, you got to make sure that this part is being held stable here, right here. Because you, you don't want to just start putting all sorts of pressure and torque on this thing, and you could tear off any, any solder joints there. You could bend the pipe. All right, so we're just going to hold this there in place and make sure we get good leverage on this one here. Okay, so if you look closely here, you can see at first glance, you might think that this is one of these type of hose bibs that unscrews, but that's not the case. It looks like they soldered it inside this three quarter inch stub out right here. So that's not my preferred way of doing things. I, I, in plumbing, you always want to avoid soldering inside a pipe, and rather you, you want to solder outside the pipe. So the first thing we're going to do is let the water continue to, to uh, drip out of here, let all of the water get out. And then we're going to heat this up in this we're going to melt the solder that's in there and hopefully this will come right out but it won't melt the solder until all the water is out of there anytime you have water in a pipe you won't be able to solder uh, in fact we uh, did a video on that and i'll put a link to that down in the description for you all right so you can see it's still dripping and that's too much water flow believe it or not to have inside the pipe and so we know that this will not be able to melt enough to separate that out so we're going to try to shut it off at the street because obviously this gate valve right here isn't doing its job and that's quite common we see this all the time in fact in this neighborhood we did a house a couple of years ago another friend that lives around the corner and he had the exact same issue where his gate valve would not close all the way and so we swapped this out with a uh, quarter turn ball valve. See all of these wires here that lead over here to these uh, transmitter sensor things? So that's how the, the city is able to wirelessly obtain your meter readings. So we're just going to try to turn this. It's a quarter turn. And that's all it should require. Here's what we're going to do here. We're going to heat up underneath with the torch right here at this point and once it's sufficiently flowed enough we'll come over here with the channel locks and try to twist it and wiggle it out of that pipe there okay so we always want to make sure we're wearing gloves to protect yourself use a small amount of flame just to heat from underneath and let it rise make sure your flame doesn't go near anything where it might catch fire have a fire extinguisher close by make sure you're wearing eye protection hand protection ready to go. So now we're going to vacuum out any water that might be in there. Hopefully this will catch it all.
what we got. Okay. Well, that's what we have. We have something different than what we thought we had. Because we thought that the thing was going inside that pipe. It's not. That's a half inch. <laughs> water had collected up in the pipe and it was dripping down a little bit so we had to vacuum out some more even. There's a lot of water in the system and you try to get it all out you open up other faucets and valves on other parts of the system in the house here uh, but you can only do so much but you have to get every bit of water out of that pipe. All right so the couple of things here for best practice I want to show you if you look at the solder on there see on there how it says lead free solder that's the only type of solder I like to use now, especially you know, with health and safety and when you're dealing with water and stuff. Because, you know, you put a spigot on here, you know, what happens if you get a kid that starts drinking out of this? Is that going to be a problem? Well, you want to make sure that that's taken out of the equation by not adding any lead that should not be there. And then if you look at my flux here, I only use water-soluble uh, paste flux here and the reason why is because any flux that's left behind any residue that didn't get wiped or removed could possibly cause corrosion later on and it could cause your solder joint to fail so these are the two things that you want to make sure you're using okay so now I have this is my reaming tool and you can see how it's got these sharp edges right here in the middle and we're going to take this and put it inside the pipe over here and we're going to just spin it around a few times back and forth just to make sure we have nice, smooth, even inside edges here on these pipes. Whenever you cut pipes, you're often left with a little ridge around there, and that causes turbulence, which can actually, over time, destroy your joint. It can cause issues and cause cracks and failures of your solder joint. So by doing this, you know, back and forth like that, and clearing out the, making it nice and smooth, when you run your finger in there, you should not feel any sharp edge. You should feel just a smooth opening. All right, so this is the, what we're going to use. This is going to be our new spigot here. This is a quarter turn ball valve. So just that's it, quarter of a turn. That turns it on, that turns it off. And then we're using this here. This is what we call a half inch male adapter. Now the reason why we're doing this is I don't want to have to sweat on a new spigot because you want to make it easier for the next person that has to come and change this in a few years to just unscrew this and pop on a new one, right? And so what we do here is we will solder this onto there. That will be permanent. And then anytime you have to change the spigot, you just screw this one on and off, all right? Perfectly simple. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna clean the inside of this, this fitting here. Even though it's brand new, I always clean them anyway. You want to roughen them up a little bit and make sure that they're absolutely clean of all debris. So if you, Come in and get a nice close look on the inside of that thing. See how it looks like a little little bit of a satin finish. That's, that's how you know it's nice and clean. And then over here on the pipe, even though it's got solder on it, it's not copper anymore, I am still going to clean that off. And we're going to flux both sides of it. Now, my preference is always to have bare copper here. But since we unsoldered the old part and we're just going to put a new one on, this will be okay here. So now I'm going to flux it. Okay, so now as I flux the outside of this, all you need is a thin coat. You don't need to glob it. I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make. So I'm just going to get under it and over the top. Nice, even, thin coating there. And then, and you notice I'm using gloves. Because from here on in, you don't ever want to touch this with your fingers now, because you'll contaminate it. And you just do a quick brushing inside the part as well. And this flux is a necessary step. This flux is what allows the capillary action to take place. So that once we put this on here, and we start to heat it up and do the soldering, it will wick the, the solder into the part here. So this is our fitting, and once we heat up the fitting, and it's only the fitting that you heat up, 
the capillary action will suck the solder from this side right into the inside of this guy and everything will be fine okay now if you notice too on this part this has a stop built into the middle of it so if we look real close there on the inside of that see that line in there that's that's useful to have because when you slide this onto the pipe it tells you where to stop so I'm going to put this on there now we're all the way in so all we have to do now is heat this up and go to town with it okay so here's something I like to do in order to get a cleaner joint now remember what the purpose of the flux is it the flux is supposed to be inside the fitting so that it sucks the solder in there so the solder will not go anywhere where there isn't flux, right? So we know we have a little bit of residue on the outside, so I always wipe the flux away from the outside. See how it's coming off on the thing here? So that way, when we go to solder, we'll have a nice clean soldering job there. And you'll see, hopefully, a nice thin stripe of solder and not globs of solder like, like you'll see with other people's joints. Okay, so our rule of thumb here, since we're doing a half-inch joint here, is to curl up the end of your solder about a half inch and you, you let it melt all the way down to the it's done at, at, at your half inch mark there what we'll do is we'll heat up from underneath like this and you only put the heat on the fitting not on the pipe you want the heat to be where you want the solder to go to so the solder will rush this way towards the heat it always finds the source of the heat that's how the capillary action works it the solder melts and goes to the flux and the heat so we're going to heat it from the bottom here and that way the heat will rise and heat up the whole part at once. Okay, so I've got a, a short flame here. So we'll just heat up the bottom of it a little bit there. It should actually be cool right here. So it appears to have wicked in now. So now what you want to do is you don't touch it, you leave it alone, you walk away for a couple of minutes, let it let it cool down, and it'll have to cool down on its own. And then once it cools down, we'll wipe it off some. I'm just going to wipe it off a little, make sure it's nice and clean, make sure there's no other leftover flux. But you can see how reasonably clean it sucked in and everything into the connection there. And remember, you want to make sure it's completely cooled off. If you come in here with a wet, cool rag, you can cause cracks and all sorts of problems with your solder joint there. Okay, so we're just going to let that finish up, cool down some more. Okay, so now before we screw this on, you never want to have just metal on metal because it'll leak, it'll drip. So we're going to seal this connection here with this, uh, this Teflon tape from OD. This is their fast tape. And so this is a little thicker than the normal stuff here. And I just want to point out for you that yes, there is a direction that you're supposed to go in when you do uh, Teflon tape. And that is as you're looking into the hole, you always want to go clockwise around. And, and I'll show you why. So clockwise around because the item that is going on here, which is the hose bib it's going to come in this way and turn like that so you want it to be in reinforcing the direction of the tape had I put the tape on counterclockwise instead it would unravel the tape instead so this is the way you want to do it so now we just screw this on
I'm going to use my uh, robo grips here to hold this nut steady right here so that that way the pipe stays steady while I tighten up the spigot head here. And you can use a wrench too. You can use a monkey wrench, adjustable wrench, anything you want, whatever works. But it doesn't have to be that much past tighten, past hand tighten. So we'll see if that's enough to hold it. Okay, so we've turned the water back on and there seems to be no drips, which is good. That means we did a good job sealing right in here with our tape. And the spigot is now on nice and tight. And let's test the water here. It's coming out pretty good. Go for it. Well, if you found this video useful, we would appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up down below here that lets us know that you like us. And be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. And when you do, click the little bell icon next to it so you'll be alerted every time we upload a video. You'll never miss a video. We put up videos all the time dealing with engineering disasters like this and remodeling your house, your kitchen, your bathroom, everything having to do with your home. So that's it for this week, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,